Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on division properties of exponents. In this lesson, you will learn how to divide monomials using the properties of exponents and how to simplify expressions containing negative and zero exponents. So let's get started. Our first key concept is quotient of powers. Basically, to divide pow two powers with the same base, subtract the exponents. And so if we have c to the 11th divided by c to the 8th, we can take 11 minus 8, which is c to the 3rd. Remember with multiplication, when we were multiplying these, we added the exponents. So now that we're dividing, we're going to subtract the exponents. And let me illustrate that real quick before we get into this first example with the r to the 5th divided by r squared. Now r to the 5th is really r times r times r times r times r divided by r squared is r times r. I feel like watching a pirate movie now. R. Anyways, we're going to simplify these by dividing because r divided by r is just 1. And so is the second r divided by r. So this just becomes r to the third. Now, of course, our shortcut is to take the 5 minus 2 to get r to the third. So let's use this property of quotient of powers to simplify this expression. And again, for this to work, we do have to assume that the de denominators are not going to equal zero, or else this just all doesn't work. So we have x to the seventh, y to the twelfth, divided by, remember that's a division sign, x to the sixth times y to the third. Well, let's treat these separately. We have x to the seventh minus six, and then we have y to the 12th minus 3. Well, 7 minus 6 is just 1, so we have x to the 1st, and then 12 minus 3 is 9, so x to the 1st, y to the 9th is our solution. Notice how I did not write a 1 next to x to the 1st? You don't need to, it's just x, it's assumed it's to the 1st, y to the 9th. Now, moving on to our next concept already, what about power of a quotient? Well, to find the power of a quotient, find the power of the numerator and the power of the denominator. So, basically, if we have a divided by b to the m power, you're going to put the m with the a and the b. So, a to the m and b to the m. So, for 3 fifths to the fourth, you're going to take 3 to the fourth and divide it by 5 to the fourth. The power gets applied to both the numerator and the denominator. And so for this expression, let's go ahead and apply the, to the third power to both the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to have 4c to the third, d to the second, all of that to the third over 5 to the third. Now, this kind of goes back to Lesson 7, 1, where we're going to have to take this to the third power and apply it to everything inside the parentheses. So this is going to be 4 to the third times c, 3 times 3, because power to a power, we're going to multiply the exponent, times d to the second times 3, and then 5 to the 3rd, we'll just simplify right now to 125. Now 4 to the 3rd is 64. C to the 9th, D to the 6th, over 125. And 64 over 125 actually does not simplify, so our answer is 64 C to the 9th, D to the 6th, over 125. Kind of ironic that this says simplify. It doesn't seem simplified, but it is. This is our simplified answer. Now what about the zero exponent property? Any non-zero number raised to the zero power is equal to 1. In other words, anything, anything to the zero power that's not zero is 1. 15 to the zero is, well, 1. b divided by c to the zero is, well, 1. 
2 to the 7 or 2 sevenths to the 0 is 1. It's a very exciting property. In fact, in our first example, 12m to the 8th, n to the 7th divided by who cares, all to the 0 power, well, that's just going to be 1. Now, note that just because you see a 0 power in your question doesn't mean the whole thing is 1. In this case it was because this was all of this to the 0 power, which is just 1. But here in the second part of this, we have m to the 0, n to the 3rd, divided by n squared. Well, this m to the 0 does become equal to 1. But then we have for our n, n to the 3 minus 2. Remember, dividing, you subtract the exponents. So our answer is simply 3 minus 2 is 1, and n to the 1st is just n. These, trust me, are, look much simpler than they really are, so be sure you're paying attention to where those zero exponents go. Now our next property of this lesson, as we continue rolling through all of these properties, is the negative exponent property. Now, for any non-zero number a and any integer n, a to the negative n is the reciprocal of a to the n. Also, a to the negative n is, or the reciprocal of a to the negative n is a to the n. Let's go to the examples down here. Might make more sense. Basically, 2 to the negative fourth power is 1 over 2 to the fourth. And we can simplify 2 to the fourth to 16, so 1 16th. Note, 2 to the negative fourth does not give you a negative answer, it gives you a fraction. 1 over j to the negative fourth, if we have an answer with a negative exponent, we can simplify that, as long as it's 1 over, to j to the fourth. Now let's see how this works in practice. We have x to the negative fourth, y to the ninth, over z to the negative six. Let's separate these out. Let's just take them separate. x to the negative fourth, we can write as 1 over x to the fourth y to the ninth, we can just keep y to the ninth. We might as well just write that over 1. It's not going to move. Our z to the negative 6, we can say, okay, that's going to be z to the 6th over 1. And that's a z. And if we combine all of these, we have y to the ninth, z to the 6th, all over x to the 4th. Because we want to rewrite these using only positive exponents. Might not be explicitly stated in these directions, but our simplified answer is only going to contain positive exponents. What about 75 p to the third, m to the negative fifth, all over 15 p to the fifth, m to the negative fourth, r to the negative eight? All right. Let's deal with the 75 over 15 first. That's going to stay 75 over 15 for now. And then our p. Well, this is going to be p to the 3 minus 5. Our m is going to be negative 5 minus a negative 4. And then we still have this whole 1 over r to the negative 8. That's on the bottom still. Now, let's go through this. 75 divided by 15 is 5 over 1. And then we have p to the negative 2, since 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Then we have negative 5 minus a negative 4 is negative 5 plus 4, so negative 1. Let's go ahead now and rewrite this 1 over r to the negative 8 as just r to the positive 8. Now, let's finish this by rewriting the negative exponents as positive. We're going to have 5 over our p to the negative 2. It's going to go to the bottom as p squared. Our m to the negative 1 is just going to go on the bottom as m. And we have then our r to the 8th on top. So our final answer here is 5r to the 8th 
over or divided by p squared m. So if you take it step by step, your coefficients, keep your variables all separate, you'll be able to piece your way through these. And today's fun fact is the word ZARF, Z-A-R-F. You know those little cardboard thingies that you put around your coffee cup? It's not called a little cardboard paper thingy. It's actually called a ZARF. It gets its origins from the Middle East, where it was actually a metal that was put around a cup. But now we can say that whenever you grab a hot coffee and it's a little too hot still, instead of saying, hey, give me another one of those little cardboard thingies, you might want to say, hey, hand me a ZARF and see if anybody knows what you're talking about. Now, in applying these properties of exponents, we need to first define what order of magnitude is. An order of magnitude of a quantity is the number rounded to the nearest 10. or nearest power of 10. Now, for this, Darren has $123,456,000 in his savings account. Tabo has $156 in his savings account. I think I'd rather be Darren. Determine the order of magnitude of Darren's account and Tabo's account. How many orders of magnitude as great is Darren's account as Tavo's account. When we look at Darren, 123,456. Now, nearest power of 10. When you think powers of 10, think 10. 100, 1,000, 100,000, 1 million dollars. Where does 123,456 fall closest to? Well, that's going to fall closest to 100,000. And we can write this as a 10 to the fifth power, as we have. Now, what about 156? 156, when you look at our 10, 100, 1,000, is closest to 100. And of course, 100 is just simply 10 to the second power. And so, determine the orders of magnitude of the accounts. For Darren, we have 10 to the fifth. And for Tabo, we have 10 to the second. Now, how many orders of magnitude as great is Darren's account as Tabo's? Well, if you know, division properties of exponent wasn't a clue enough. You know, how many times as tall as somebody you're going to divide? How many times as much does someone have than someone else you're going to divide? And so for this question, we're going to take 10 to the fifth, and we're going to divide it by 10 to the second. And of course, this is just 10 to the five minus two, which is 10 to the third. Now, to answer the question, we can say that Darren's account is three, since it's 10 to the third, three orders of magnitude as great as Tabo's account. And that's it for this lesson. Feel free the next time you're out for coffee to ask for a zarf. Good luck.